welcome back to another episode of No Waco. This is your host, Debbie. Welcome back to another episode of No Waco. I'm your host, Debbie, and today we have a very special guest here in the studio. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, thank you, Debbie, for having me on. My name is Andrew Taylor, mm-hmm. and I'm the general manager at a Cafe Homestead. Woo-woo! Yeah, the restaurant at Homestead Heritage. Yeah. Um, and I do some of the you know music production, multimedia yes. production. Yeah, I'll be live streaming the mm-hmm. Homestead Fair this weekend. Uh, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, and one of the first questions I always ask our guests is, what brought you to Waco? Or are you a Waco native? Yeah. So the answer to that question is my parents brought me to Waco. Yay. Because I was only about 10 years old. <laughs> oh, okay. Same. Okay. So we have a very similar story. Yeah. I didn't have much choice in the matter. Yeah. Understandable. Um, but I'm very glad that they made the mm-hmm. choice that they did. I was born in Dallas, mm-hmm. uh, in Plano, actually, mm-hmm. back when Plano used to be nothing. Small. Yeah. Nothing. Now they have an HEB. Oh, my goodness. I They're know. Probably right? about to have a central market <laughs> for all I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> they really moved up in the world. So uh, yeah. I go back there frequently and it's, it's definitely grown mm-hmm. a lot. Um, my dad uh, worked in a computer, uh, you know, raid chip controller, hmm. all that stuff. Back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> and I uh, worked for Texas Instruments. Oh, wow. When uh, they had operations in Temple. So we mm-hmm. lived in Temple for a while. Worked at uh, Compaq. So we lived in Houston for mm-hmm. a while. And then when I was 10, we moved to Waco. Wow. So mm-hmm. why Waco? So for us, uh, we moved to Waco because my dad got into land surveying. Oh, interesting. He now has a land surveying firm. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. He worked uh, worked for 15, 19 for years. Wow. Has his own business now. Mm-hmm. Sunbelt Technical Services. So that's why we moved to Oh, wow. Waco. Yeah. And so you've been here for a bit now. Um, and what is one of your favorite things about Waco so far? Oh, so uh, I would say definitely uh, the best thing about Waco. And I, I love, you know, I love where I was, you know, born. I love, you know, <laughs> going back and seeing Dallas yeah. every once in a while. But Waco is, Waco is definitely home yeah. uh, because it's, it's just got the right, uh, there's like there's something about the small town Mm -hmm. uh, small town vibes big city feels and no matter how we've grown here we we've still managed to keep that yeah i like that yeah that's fantastic um so how long have you been working with homestead so tell me more about that yeah so um we uh we had joined the church and the community Mm -hmm. um about the time we moved up here oh wow which was definitely one of the reasons that we the biggest reason yeah um that we moved to waco and uh, so I've been, I, I think I first played in one of the uh, Thanksgiving festivals. I think <gasps> I played like bass guitar. Or oh something. my gosh. And I was 14. Uh huh. And I sang in the choir mm-hmm. when I was even younger than that. Oh, wow. Uh, I believe I was like eight or That's something. That's so like cute. That. Adorable. We need pictures. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have, to, I'll have to get you some. I, I'm sure I've got some. I sang some solos. Hopefully we don't That'll have That'll be like recordings. the photo we put. Like, So we n- usually do on our little posts, like a little photo. Yeah. Or we'll do like the logo. We'll just do a picture of you at eight years old. There you no. go. There you go. Yeah, so so we have these choirs that start at six. And so I got to mm-hmm. be part of that. Oh, that's, that's pretty great. awesome. But so uh, so since, uh, since about 14, I've mm-hmm. been involved in some of the you know multimedia music yeah um and then now some of the the business development yeah so as well. h- how long have you guys been in waco so we actually just last year celebrated 30 years whoop, whoop. Yeah, shout out that's years. fantastic absolutely that's amazing and so uh we bought the the piece of property mm-hmm. about 550 acres on the brazos river mm-hmm. in 1991 wow we started the restaurant in 1994 wow so we're coming that's up still before i was born same <laughs> <laughs> i'll be 30 this year oh wow so. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so that's fantastic. So um, you grew up in the area um, and you guys have an amazing festival every year that you open up to the public. You guys have demonstrations, um, all kinds of fun stuff. So tell me more about the festival. Yeah. So um, so it's the Friday and Saturday and Sunday following Thanksgiving. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, it's it's a really great time of year to do it. Um, hopefully the weather yes, is good. That's it's what we're... looking good so whoop, far. Whoop, yeah. So, we're uh, hoping for it all the way through the uh, the weekend. Um, one of the most neat things that I, I think is, uh, and I did this whenever I was a, a kid as well, um, kids can come and make like a birdhouse or a Aww. bird feeder or something like that. Yeah. It's actually a lot of fun because uh, those make great Christmas gifts. Mm-hmm. 
And so I would do that every year for my, I mean, I'm part of the community and mm-hmm. I would at the fair. So your mom has like 12 bird houses yes. is what you're telling well, me. And I would give them to my grandparents and <laughs> yeah, I'd give them yeah. to aunts and uncles. Oh, So much fun. And kids do that every year they're coming in and you know, they're not just making it mm-hmm. you know, for themselves. They're making it Aww. for, you know, their grandpa or something. Or it's their mom saying, I don't want this in my house. So you're giving it to your grandma, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Th- thankfully, my grandparents didn't uh, comment on the quality of my craftsmanship because it probably wasn't very high. <laughs> hey. That's all right. That's all right. That's why you keep doing it. Every year you got a little better, right? That's right. Um, But yeah, so you guys also have a barn raising demonstration. So tell me about that. Yeah, that's really really fun. So there's a business in the community that uh, dismantles and restores Mm -hmm. and then uh, resurrects these barns. That's so cool. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. They've been featured on uh, Chip and Joanna's. Mm -hmm. Shout uh, out. Yes, for sure. Restoration Road, um, and uh, as well as is a little bit on Fixer Upper, but Mm -hmm. mostly on Restoration Road. So um, that's a lot of fun. You can get, uh, so all these barns, they were, they were made by some of the, uh, the early settlers mm-hmm. here in the States, people that, that came over from, you know, maybe Holland mm-hmm. or England and, and wherever they came from, they had a particular way of doing barns. Mm-hmm. They built them differently in England than they did in Holland. And so when they came to the States, they brought their skills with them mm-hmm. and they made these barns and there are only so many of them. Wow. And so we've, we've, we've been finding those, uh, when you come out to Homestead, most of the buildings mm-hmm. are actually, or a good number of them, I guess I should say, are actually restored barns. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. And so every year at the fair, we usually, uh, we'll, you know, have a demonstration, a hands-on demonstration. Mm-hmm. Don't watch us do it. As you got to do it. Get in there. You get in there <laughs> with the little pike and uh-huh. you uh, raise a barn just yeah. like they raised, you know, barns 300 years ago. Yeah. And you guys have like kind of like a craft village. So you guys have um, textile work and artisan work and other made goods. Um, you guys even have a mill, correct? Yes. Um, the um, mill. Yes. It's so so fun. I like, got some grits last year. That was, okay. I, I, they're delicious. I love them. Yes. They're amazing. There's nothing <laughs> like stone ground grits. I know. It's just it, like the texture is so different. Like I, I, I don't want to go back to store bought grits after this. That's exactly <laughs> right. And and so one one of the things that we do at the restaurant is like all of the flour mm-hmm. that we use that comes from the grits. Oh, They're on the property. So cool. It's all ground, and it's just like the grits. It's different than mm-hmm. the stuff that you get at the store. Yeah. And so we have special recipes that mm-hmm. we use, uh, and. It makes the bread taste amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. And then you guys will also be having music demonstrations and stuff yes. too. So tell me about that. Lots of music. So that's that's one of the things that's nearest and dearest to my mm-hmm, heart. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we have uh, children's choirs oh, and so orchestras. Cute. We mm-hmm. have this awesome kids orchestra. Wow, I wish I knew how to play an instrument. Oh, yeah. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, they. Uh, so what they do, uh, the, the kids choir, we have two of them. One of them is from like six to nine or ten years old. Mm-hmm. So cute to see these little kids mm-hmm. get up there and sing. And, and for for every child that, that grows up in Homestead Heritage, six is like this massive year for them because <laughs> getting to join the choir. You got to I mean, do all the fun things. They sit down there for, you know, however long before and just pine away for the day mm-hmm. that I they can wait. get up there yeah and so then <laughs> so i have a i have a four-year-old Aww. and a two-year-old well they'll be four and two in january congratulations so close. Uh, thank you and uh so they're i mean my little daughter eliza who's mm-hmm. nearly four is just dying to be mm-hmm. part of the choir i mm-hmm. mean she just can't wait so two more years for mm-hmm. her you know she's counting down the days yes even though she probably doesn't know how to count that high yet, right but exactly. that's okay she's gonna learn <laughs> just to be able to count yeah exactly whenever she gets to be in the choir so that's a lot of fun and so then we'll have um then we have i, I think it's like 10 to you know 16 or 17 yeah. and they're accompanied by the youth orchestra which mm-hmm. is similar ages mm-hmm. and then in the evening we'll have our adult uh, and uh, choir and orchestra. Yeah, that's going to be fantastic. So basically, like, across the weekend, there's, like, five concerts. Wow. And th- what are some of the other things you guys have going on? Yeah, so uh, definitely food. Mm-hmm. We have a lot I'm of I'm there food. for the food. I'm a foodie. Oh, a Waco foodie, so. Yes, hashtag foodie for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you, you can get everything from, you know, burgers to uh, authentic Mexican gorditas. We Ooh. actually have a sister community in Mexico, so some of them will wow. come up. And they'll just, you know, kind of give us some tips on how to make authentic Mexican food, which is really awesome. What we need, yeah. And then uh, we'll do uh, kettle corn. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorites. I got some kettle corn. For breakfast, every year at the fair, I have Mm -hmm. this little tradition that Mm -hmm. I have to eat um, some apple cider donuts. Ooh. Yeah, it's donuts that are made from fresh-pressed apple cider. 
That's exciting. Fresh, you know, fresh press it on site, make donuts out of it. So that's awesome. I'd say the other thing, uh, which is uh, some, I mean, any one of these things, you could just come to the fair for just that one thing. You could just yeah. come for the music. You could just come for the food. You could just come for the hands-on crafts. What's also really awesome is the uh, the seminars that we mm-hmm. do. So for, you know, for the last... I did one of the sustainability ones. Did you? That's yeah. fantastic. Yes. Which one did you do? Um, it was over in the greenhouse. So I think it was just about like um, sustainably... So I was living in an RV. So okay. me and my husband were RVers for two years. Yeah. Um, so I think they were talking about like solar energy and then they were talking about like planting oh, um, awesome. and crops and all that stuff. I, I'm, I'm a big buff for anything that's like, um, you know, anything that's going to help our planet. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and honestly, during, uh, during COVID, we had so many people mm-hmm. reaching out to us saying like, Hey, I'm going into the grocery store mm-hmm. and I don't see a lot of food. Yeah. You know, how do I, how do I grow my yeah. own food? How do I make my own bread? We got so many people, but we've been doing that now for nearly 50 years. Wow. And so just to have some, you know, that, that wealth of knowledge mm-hmm. and tips and information. The masters at your fingertips. Well, it's it's awesome because people come out and then they can ask questions mm-hmm. uh, and and see it done. Yeah. And kind of learn how to do it themselves. Yeah, I love that. And it was so fantastic because it's kind of just getting to see like a bunch of people who are all interested in the same yes. thing. And, um, you know, in a forum that is a safe space where you can ask questions and find out more. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. And what else do you guys have going on? Oh my goodness! There's so much. So if, if we were if we were doing a lot, <laughs> just more do like than a that, whole list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we're doing more than that, then we'd probably be dead. Well, by true. Cyber Monday. <laughs> yeah, by Monday we're out. We're gonna no, go every, sleep for two years. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> go into hibernation. Yeah, until next until the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Honestly, every year there's something that some new booth or something mm-hmm. that that I didn't even know was gonna mm-hmm. happen. Every year, it just it gets bigger and yeah. a lot more fun, but. Definitely, you have to come out to Yay. see to see everything. But definitely, those four categories: the, mm-hmm. the music, the food, seminars, and uh, the kids' projects. Yeah, adult projects too. Yeah, adult <laughs> projects can do things as well. And then, of course, shopping. Like you got to get all yes. the fun and cool oh, things that they goodness. have to buy. Yes. Definitely. I mean, Black Friday, it's a time to shop. There you go. You can get all of your Christmas presents. You can, if you don't, if you can't buy them, you can make them too. Ta-da! There you go. <laughs> Easy peasy. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited. And you guys do this every year. So I'm so excited to finally have you on the podcast. Well, I'm going to talk you. about it. Um, we're hitting three years in February. So I was like, we got to do it now. So Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> and, and I've been like, I want to say like three, four times. So I'm like, I already try to make it a habit of going. So yes. um, I'm I was just so excited that you guys were able to message me back. Um, So with this, Fighting About the Festival, we're just going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back. All right. And now for a word from our sponsors. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one-star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one-star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one-star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, foes, and heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. 
I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything. And, and basically, I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden yeah. Age stuff is always the best. And we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> bros and bros and heroes gonna tell you about bros and bros and heroes gonna tell you about. Nine one one. What's your emergency? Do you hear that? It's coming from the house. It's coming from inside the house? Uh, do you mean, could it be? The Bolter House. New from Rogue Media, two haunted hotties talking about haunted places. Every episode, we dive deep into the darkest places and give you a bit of history. We're getting spooky in all the right places. You've gobbled your last ghoul. Follow along for the craziest and spookiest stories with Debbie's Dark Tourism. The Stanley Hotel, Winchester House, The Alamo, Hotel Monte Vista, and more spooky places. Find us at the underscore Poltergals. P-O-L-T-E-R-G-A-L-S. Look over your shoulder. It's us, the Poltergals. Wherever you consume the podcast, you can find us there. And now, back to the episode. And we're back. Well, we just got finished talking about the amazing festival happening this yes. weekend. Um, so now we'll get into some of the other things that you guys do. Yeah. Um, so we're coming up at the end of 2022. We're already thinking about 2023. Yes. Um, what are some of your goals by the end of the year? And what are some of the things you're looking forward to doing next year? Yeah. So, I, I mean, definitely a big goal for next year. I'm planning to... Um, to, to really expand some of the videos and stuff mm -hmm. that we're doing. Yeah. Uh, we, we do a weekly broadcast that's on, you know, sort of, uh, uh, you know, cultural mm -hmm. and uh, community uh, topics and yeah. stuff. We'll be expanding that with more videos about how to grow your own food. That'll be so fun. So many things like that. I think that's going to be a big goal going forward mm -hmm. uh, for us. Yeah, that's going to be fantastic. Um, and then, you know, you guys have events all the time, even at the cafe. So tell me about those. Yes. Yeah. So we actually, so for... Um, uh, like we, we opened in 1994. Mm -hmm. We've been primarily a lunch establishment mm -hmm. uh, since then. But uh, actually during COVID, we decided to open for dinner. Wow. And so we are now open for dinner Thursday through Saturday. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really awesome. Steaks, um, farm-raised chicken. It's mm -hmm. raised on our, on our farm out there. A lot of things like that. It's a really awesome menu. But then we also do uh, special dinners. We mm -hmm. usually do them. Uh, we'll do them, uh, let's see, Christmas, mm -hmm. Valentine's, mm -hmm. Mother's Day, and Father's Day. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and you guys do special events and just, you know, again, the cafe is open all the time so people can go and get um, fresh local ingredients and in their food. Um, and you guys have a variety of things on your menu that just showcase everything that you guys have to offer. Yes. Um, the best is the Brazos mm -hmm. Valley Salad. Ooh. It is a splash of color mm. and it is a splash of awesomeness to your mm -hmm. taste palates Ooh. that you can't imagine. It's blueberries, strawberries, truffle gold cheese that's made wow. out at the, oh my uh, gosh. the farm. Yes. Uh, and then just these amazing dressings that'll wow. take you to the next level. All right. I'm so excited. Yeah. My mouth is literally watering. I just had a taco salad. I should calm down. Um, <laughs> but I am, like I, I said, should have brought you one. As I previously mentioned, it's okay. Maybe next time. Yeah, when next I have time. you on next year, <laughs> you can have a redemption and yeah, bring, me, <laughs> that's right. yeah. bring me snacks. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, you, you're not obligated to bring anything to the host. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so you guys do events all year round. Um, and I know you guys already provide so much for the community, but what is something you would like to see more of in the community? Yeah, so it would definitely Definitely, um, I, I'm I'm rooting for every, uh, and I know it sounds funny to say as general manager of a restaurant, <laughs> but it's it's not. 
I'm rooting for every good restaurant that mm-hmm. comes to Waco. Yeah. I'm so happy about it because I think that um, every time we open a new restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, every time that we do something like that, it just raises the bar. Yeah. And I think that's that's really great. I think people coming to Waco, um, you see a, you know, a Pignetti's coming to town. I love Pignetti's. You see 135 Prime. You see mm-hmm. you know, so many of these places. Uh, I just love that it that it it elevates mm-hmm. what we have in Waco. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and Waco has such a vibrant community, um, and I love that we have such a rich cultural center with you guys located. I mean, right outside of Waco, but basically right yes. here in Waco. Um, and I mean, there's going to be so much more brought to our community. Um, but why do you think it's so important for you guys to be in Waco now and do the things you do? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Waco has been known. Uh, kind of more recently as sort of a community of artisans Mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, We've, we've actually been doing some of these things now since the early nineties. Wow. And so uh, we didn't realize what a good spot we were, we were going to be in uh, in terms of just the the right town Mm -hmm. for what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, I I think, I think we've had a, we've had a, a very positive impact in, in that direction. And now you see, you know, something, you know, Magnolia, all of these, uh, artisan businesses that are mm-hmm. springing up from that. Uh, that's something that we love. We mm-hmm. love that because uh, it's something that we're doing. And and I, I still remember, um, I don't myself, you know, watch, you know, TV or whatever, but I remember seeing some, uh, a couple of the, the episodes mm-hmm. of Magnolia. And I, I realized, I was like, this is why people want to come to Waco. It's because, <laughs> yep. like, I see the B-roll and I see the, you know, the the cow out in the pasture and mm-hmm. the mist rising off of the Brazos. And I see these things and I'm like, that, there's something about the values mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. There's something that, that people love. And so the people that are coming to Magnolia, they're the... They share the values that we yeah. have. They, they share a love for the land and mm-hmm. family and mm-hmm. so many of those those things that, that may seem traditional, but... Uh, it, I just I think it's really great to see those people ever more yeah. coming to Waco, just increasing uh, because of so many of these things that are, you know, now showing up to Waco. Yeah. And so, again, you guys have been in the community for 30 years. So mm-hmm. um, and especially you being here for at least growing up here, yes. you've been able to see so much grow in Waco. Um, so what have you seen so far that has um, made you happy in the community or why are you glad to be here? Um, well, I have to think about that one. I, I'm glad for <laughs> I'm glad for so many reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I just I can't imagine. I'll say this: I think that Waco is the best town that that I can think of mm-hmm. to raise a family in. Yeah, a hundred percent. A lot of people say that that they come on the show. That's one of the number one things. Yeah, and like I say, I've got I've got a family with a four year old and a two year old, mm-hmm. and I actually live on the farm mm-hmm. out there at, at Homestead. Um, but just in general for the whole, the whole community, I try to picture myself anywhere else. I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Waco is, Waco is the place to to raise them. And I I don't know if I'll be here forever, but I sure intend to stay for as, as long as I can. Yeah. So you've made this place your home. Um, is there anybody that's helped you along this journey or anyone you want to shout out? Oh, definitely. If if I, if I was to go down the list that we'd be here (laughs) till dinner time. Well, I always say you can shout out your mom, your dog or your grandma. So all of the above. (laughs) Yeah. All of the above. No, no, definitely. There's so many people, um, you know, out, uh, you know, I'll start with the people at, at Homestead who mm-hmm. have, have helped me personally. Um, Asa L. Adams, mm-hmm. um, you know, if you watch our, our uh, weekly broadcast, mm-hmm. he's kind of the main um, host of that. I'm just the producer. I'm not on the camera. <laughs> Behind the often. camera. Um, but uh, certainly him and so many others. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom, mm-hmm. uh, who originally was the, was the first person who uh, really uh, gave me the inspiration to uh, to be a part of music, to yeah. help Asael, to mm-hmm. do so many of these things, uh, it, she gets some credit for Aww. sure. <laughs> Good job, mom. And I and I would I would <laughs> shout out my dog, but he's not really trained yet. So That's okay. I, I feel like I'll be shouting out my wife once she is finished <laughs> helping me train the dog. So. There you go. There you go. I get that. Well, that's fantastic. And thank you so much for coming on today. Um, make sure. Yes, yes, it's fantastic. Um, and make sure and share with us where we can find you, find more information, find out about the event. Absolutely. So you can go to homesteadfair.com. Mm-hmm. You can also go to homesteadheritage.com and we're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Slide in those DMs. Yep, uh, for <laughs> sure. And uh, 
and uh, certainly Instagram as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I reached out, and you guys were responsive and able to get this scheduled. So that's yes. absolutely amazing. And watch the fair if you're not able to attend. Yes, definitely watch it live on YouTube. Okay, that would be I'll great. I'll be the host. I'll answer questions. Hi. If you have questions, just let me know. <laughs> All right, great. And is there anything else you want to share with our listeners today? I can't think of anything else. I, All right. I, that means you did a good job. Yeah, well, yeah. Either <laughs> I forgot something or I did a great job. I was going to say, check your notes. Check your notes. <laughs> yeah, Make sure yeah. you didn't forget anything. No, I think you did great. Well, it was fantastic having you on, and I'm looking forward to the festival. Thank you so much. Thanks yes. for having me, Debbie. Find us everywhere on all social media platforms, K-N-O-W underscore Waco. Check us out at RogueMediaNetwork.com and we're on YouTube under Rogue Media Network. Check out NoWaco.com.